أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلاة تخرجنا بها من أوحال الوهم وتوضحنا ما أشكل حتى يفهم إنك تعلم ولا نعلم وأنت علام الغيوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who made us from amongst the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who graced us with the gift of Iman. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who bestowed upon us the gift of being amongst the ranks of Sayyidina, uh, amongst the people of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and have the honor of reflecting his sunnah in the communities that we have today. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's shown us the way towards his pleasure through the greatest of his creation and the one upon whose, whom is his pleasure, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah bless him and bless his family and his companions and those who follow his way until the end of time. Alhamdulillah, we've been blessed tonight to have an English mawlid. This is a format that enables us in England to appreciate this tradition that has gone back hundreds of years. This tradition of celebrating the birth of the Prophet وسلم, and celebrate, has been celebrated in so many different languages and in so many different cultures in order to raise the remembrance and enable people to attach themselves to the personality of the one who is so misunderstood in these days. Tonight we raise his remembrance while outside many people they wonder why we raise his remembrance. Just like in the life of time of, in his lifetime, where the wife of Abu Lahab, Umm al-Jamil, she comes asking Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, where's this one that insults me, this mudhammam, this one who's often been, his, uh, his name is reprehensible to us, the insulted one playing on his name Muhammad وسلم, when he is the one who is most praised and not insulted. And he's, because she does not understand the true reality of the personality of the Prophet وسلم, her own vision was taken from her whereby she didn't even see him in, when she was in his presence وسلم, whereby Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, is aghast as he looks aside and, s and thinks, can she not see him as they're sitting by the Kaaba? And then when she leaves, after asking where his whereabouts was, the Prophet said, Abu Bakr says, did she not see you? Allah took her sight away from me. And then he says, doesn't it amaze you, Ya Abu, Abu Bakr? Does it not amaze you that they talk about this Mudhammam, the one that's oft insulted, and I am Muhammad, the one who is off praise. And so the, the, what this clarifies is that the personality that they think they are talking about within the media today is not the one who we are talking about, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu He's a completely different type of personality. He's a completely different type of person. He's the one who changed history. He's the one who gives us hope in our times. He's the one who came to guide mankind. He's the one who we have to show our children, this next upper coming generation, what a gift we have. And so this is why these gatherings are so important to us. Why? Because this is the power of nostalgia don't think this gathering tonight is something that doesn't have huge significance in the hearts of our children. Don't underestimate the power of nostalgia. Something that you remember when you were a child and it brings back happy memories. Because happy memories that you remember from your past are some of the most powerful things to bring about change in you. To show you that there is life, worth life is worth living on. 
to show you that there is opportunities, there is hope. This is the power of nostalgia and having happy memories in our youth. Just as the children, they, this, they uh, performed this nativity play, or whatever you wish to call it, and just as when Sham uplifted our souls by reciting Arabic poetry, English poetry and Urdu poetry, many of you can appreciate that me why did many of you prefer the Urdu poetry, the Nats? Because it brings you back to happiness when you were a child. And so these events are incredibly important because when our children grow up, they will have a, an affection and they will have a powerful link to their childhood through their religion. So they will see their religion as a source of happiness, not as a source of woe, not as a, a means to put them down, not as a means to make them feel miserable. Rather, it brings delight and happiness to their hearts. So when they're older, they can reflect over these memories and thus bring that happiness that wells up inside them. Gratitude and happiness is one of the most powerful medications to treat our souls. And the Prophet ﷺ was the ultimate expression and manifestation of gratitude and positivity and productivity. When the whole earth seemed dark, when the powers that be at that time in his lifetime, when he, before he was born, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the powers of Rome, the Byzantine Empire, and the Persian Empire, they seemed they had a grip on the people of their time. And people felt they were oppressed. People felt there was no hope. From a small little house in the barren valley of Mecca, from a young lady called Amina, bursts forth a light that shook the very palaces of the holy lands that was ruled by the Byzantine Empire at the time. The throne room of the Persian Empire, uh, Emperor was shook with so much might, bringing 14 of its balconies down. All from a small little home. How could it have this power? Because of the positivity of the personality that emerged with that light on that night, in the dawn of that day, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whereby that was the sign and the mark that the ultimate personality in history was about to emerge. And even as we've seen, there's a, pam a famous pamphlet by Michael H. Hart, the 100 most influential people in history. He marked, as you most probably know, that he, marked, he put Muhammad وسلم, at the top of the list. Why? He said no one historically has been a success from both a secular level and a religious level any time in history like Muhammad وسلم, Acknowledging, even being a non-Muslim, acknowledging this contribution that he came. So what's the purpose of these events? How did it all come about? This tradition of the Mawlid was instituted by a man called Imam al-Azafi. Imam al-Azafi passed away in the year 633 and he was from a region of Morocco called Ceuta, Septa, which is today a Spanish colony. And he was uh, devastated by what he saw of the state of the Muslims of his time. The Muslims of Spain and the Muslims of Morocco, especially in this region <coughs> of Morocco, they have been colonized by the Spanish, he saw that the Muslims were drifting away from their religion to the point where he said the young children and the families were, were celebrating Christmas and celebrating the new year and they didn't understand their religion whatsoever. And he felt, the imp he felt it imperative 
that he institutes something that could reconnect them to the religion, something they could relate to and connect to, in order for them to appreciate that they have the ultimate example in their lives. And he is the one to look upon as a source of guidance. And that his birth was the most miraculous event in history. And so he composed a molded, a nativity of the birth of the Prophet ﷺ. And he gathered the children and the families around to relate this. This was six years, 600 years after the Prophet ﷺ. He saw this as imperative. He acknowledged that this was an innovation. But he said it's a necessary one. Because the people are going astray. And so events like these are necessary in order to make sure we as, a, as families and our children have a connection and an understanding of the true nature of our messenger. And this is so important in these times when there's so much misunderstanding about who he is, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so the, the molded tradition, the readings that they would read from, would start from his lineage, because the scholars felt it was imperative that if you love someone, you wish to know everything about them. And so they said, you must know his lineage, his 22 forefathers, his ancestors, going back to Adnan, up until him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then they would narrate his births, his birth, and then they would narrate his childhood, and how he grew up, his, his time when he was a young man, how he got married, and then how he received re revelation, and then how he entered Medina. And then finally, his shama'il, his sublime qualities, both inwardly and outwardly, in order to connect the people to the Prophet ﷺ. This, this thing that he instituted, Imam al-Azafi in Sekta, within the space of 50 years, probably less, by a man called Abu al-Khattab ibn Dihya, who again was from Morocco, he was traveling to Kurdish in the lands of Kurdistan in a place called Irbal, which is in modern-day Kurdistan, he went to the ruler of the time, Abu Sa'id al-Kawkabari, and he gave him this reading that he had composed of the Prophet's birth. And Abu Sa'id, this ruler of Kurdistan, think Spain, Kurdistan, which is in modern-day Turkey and Iraq, within that short space of time, they had no TVs, they had no mobile phones, they had no means to communi commun communicate with one another except through travel. The, the Mawlid tradition had spread from there to there, from west to east, within a very short space of time, and it overtook the Muslim world. And the scholars saw the necessity of it in their times, of celebrating the birth of the Prophet ﷺ. And to this day, we still have it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved this in order for us to have that connection towards him and our children to celebrate in, his re in rejoicing in this personality that we have in our lives and we so often forget and, don't, and take for advantage and what's even more amazing is that the Prophet was not only born on the 12th of Monday the 12th of Rabi'il Awwal but his first signs of revelation came to him on Monday the 12th of Rabi'il Awwal these signs that he, of these dreams, these vivid dreams. And that he entered Medina. When? On Monday, the 12th of Rabi'il Awwal. And he passed away. When? On Monday, the 12th of Rabi'il Awwal. So in reality, this is not just a celebration of his birth. It's a celebration of his life. This is like an anniversary. So that annually, the masses do not forget what the Prophet ﷺ brought. Just like we have anniversaries for Martin Luther King, or for Mehmet and Gandhi, or all these personalities in history, so people can remind themselves of the contribution these people have brought to our lives. But the Prophet ﷺ didn't suffice himself with just one year, when a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, I notice, O oh, emissary of Allah, that you fast every Monday. And the Prophet ﷺ said, and he asked why. The Prophet ﷺ informed him in the 
traditional in Sahih and Muslim that this will, don't let this day pass you by except that you fast it because this is the day that I was born sallallahu alaihi wasallam which shows us, which clarifies for us how one celebrates their birthday how a birthday should be celebrated by showing thanks by fasting when I'm in the madrasa with the children some child brings celebrations into the it's our celebration for some reason and he comes into the madrasa with his box and he shares chocolates out with the other children. And I say to him, Is it your birthday? He says, It is. He says, I say, Do you know what I do on my birthday? He says, What do you do? He says, I give a gift to my mother. Why on earth would you give a gift to the mother, your mother? It's my birthday, I should receive things. I say, no, 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 no. Did you do anything on your birthday? Did you, when you were born, did you do anything? No, I didn't do anything. Well, I came in this world. Well, who did the work? Mum did. So who deserves a gift? Who actually did something? Mum did. So you, shouldn't you give a gift to your mum? Shouldn't you go up to your mum and give her a card and say, thank you, mum, for giving birth to me? Do you know how the Prophet ﷺ celebrated his birthday? What did he do? He fasted. Why on earth would I want to fast? I'm looking forward to cake. Well, you can break your fast on your cake, with your cake. So, okay. Then, but should people give me gifts? Okay, if they give you gifts, no problem, but you shouldn't expect gifts. You're not sitting like a king on the throne. In fact, the Christians, they were the ones that had an issue with, with Christmas. Why? Because within the Bible, who were the characters that used to celebrate their birthdays? It was Pharaoh and King Herod. Because the kings of the day, they used to think, I'm such a blessing to you, what have you got to give me? So the Christians had a big issue with Christmas. Because they said this is what the tyrants of their times celebrated. But the Prophet ﷺ says, no! Celebrate your birthday. But do it by giving thanks. By giving, not expecting. By giving to others, not expecting. So by giving charity, teaching your children to give charity on that day when they were born, teaching them to thank, give, give thanks to their mother and father, by fasting and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what the Prophet is trying to teach us on these blessed occasions. And so we have to reevaluate the whole meaning behind the mawlid is to reevaluate why we do things. The, the Muslims of the time, in the time of Imam Azafi, what were they doing? They were celebrating Christmas, they were celebrating New Year's. Why? Well, that's what people are doing. They're enjoying themselves. And we like a good time. Muslims love a good time. So why don't we contribute with them? No, no. Reevaluate why you do things. Well, why, you, why, you, why is your child, why are you selling bread? But some real people dampen birthdays. They say, why would you want to celebrate your birthday? It's just a day closer to death. I say, you morbid man. You know how to really mess your kids up. Why do we look at death as something morbid? The Prophet ﷺ called it Tuhfatul Mu'min. It's the gift, the prized gift of the believer. He yearns to be with his Lord. And we wish to, and Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who bestowed another day on us so we can do more good deeds. So that we're on that day, we, we hope, our hope is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we accept these gifts from us. So we, ble we thank Allah for more days, but we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that day when we get to meet Him as well. This is a blessed thing. And so we should, we should be morbid, miserable people. And that's the whole basis. And that's the whole foundation of this Mawlid tradition. It's celebration. And it's fundamental, brothers and sisters, it is fundamental for us in this time to be happy Muslims. Because if our children do not see that our religion makes us happy, they won't want any bit of it. They will grow up and say, Islam was a, my, the bane of my life. My parents put Islam in their life and they were strict, legalistic, oppressive, miserable toe rags and they will run from the religion 
So it is imperative that we show a side to our children of this, our religion, that is beautiful through the beautiful personality of the Prophet ﷺ. And we show that we are happy because of this gift. How do we bring happiness into our life? Tonight, I'm hoping you can go away with something that will change your life. And this, the, the, the basis of this is in our religion. It's just the problem with us as Muslims are, we've got the puzzle, but we don't know on earth how to put the pieces together. We've got the image, but we're not getting it working. Do you know what can rid you of all negative emotion? And non-Muslims are acknowledging this and they are putting it into practice. Do you know what can rid you of negativity and bad emotion and depression? It's a deep feeling of gratitude. A deep, overwhelming feeling of gratitude. How do you get that into your life? By gatherings like this. But living in the gathering, not checking your mobile phone as you go, thinking what you're going to do afterwards. Living in the moment. Feeling, being attached with your soul to the moment. They say, if you can hold a moment of gratitude for 15 seconds without any other thought trying to distract you, you will be able to dispel any negativity that you're feeling. So say one day you're feeling completely negative and then you, start, you take a memory of your past. A moment when you felt so overwhelmingly happy. Can you imagine that? A moment in your life where you, you close your eyes you can smell what it was like. You know who, who was with you at that moment. It, when you think of that moment, you just live in it and you feel overwhelmingly happy. And can you hold that thought for 15 seconds? You will dispel all negativity that you're feeling at that moment. The proof of that is labor. A woman... If she's in labor, she's going through ultimate pain and agitation. As soon as that baby is born, you would think logically, get that thing away from me. That thing has caused me ultimate agony. But she sees this pure being. And she sees the positivity that, that bursts forth from this being. And she can't help but fall in love and take it and she forgets all her pain. So this shows you that a moment of gratitude dispels darkness. Gratitude kills negativity. And that's exactly what was happening with the birth of the Prophet ﷺ. It brought down balconies of darkness. It put out a fire that lasted for a thousand years that suppressed people in the worship of idolatry. So hold that thought. And then start collecting moments of gratitude in your life. Have a gratitude journal. And every day sit down and go through those moments and relive them. I tell you, your life will change. And that's the whole purpose of these gatherings. To try to live a moment of gratitude. When I, was, I just came back from Umrah. And my goal was that I'm going to live in the moment. And I'm going to sit by it. the moment that was the most... Two moments were most powerful for me. One was by in Jumu'ah sitting in front of the Kaaba from 9 o'clock until 12 o'clock and be able to sit so close to the Kaaba and listen to the Imam of the Khutbah and me actually see him. It's many, many other years when I performed him, I couldn't even get in there. And then I made dua after, one of the times of where dua is answered. And I said, oh Allah, and I made dua and tears come to my eyes. I said, this moment I'm not going to forget. I'm going to hold that moment so when I go back to England, I'm going to recall that moment every day so that I can dispel all depression, all stress, all anxiety, all negative emotion. Second most powerful moment for me on Umrah was sitting by the feet of the Prophet ﷺ. My favorite spot, when you go into the left from Babi Nisa and go down around the side and sit by the Prophet's feet and do send salawat on him ﷺ. I can see, what am I seeing? What am I feeling? To hold that moment and feel ultimate gratitude. And so every day I hold those moments, I feel rejuvenated, I feel energy, I feel positivity, I feel a connection, I feel love because of this personality, because of these beautiful mark, landmarks, the Kaaba, the where the Prophet is buried. 
these places that still last until this day that we can hold on to and have hope in and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us. And gatherings like this. These are fundamental to bring happiness into our lives and for our children. Because everyone wants good for their children. But it's not in material things. It's in quality time. Spending time with your wife is not watching a film. It's not you two reading another book. It's you spending quality time. Most of us men don't understand what that means. Living in the moment and sharing one another's memories and happy times. This is what the Mawlid is all about. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes this a magical moment for us. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he blesses us. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we praise him and give him thanks for this blessing of having the Prophet sallallahu in our lives. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blesses us and protects us in our communities. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he accepts all this remembrance and this recitation of the Quran and his coming together for his sake, that he accepts it from us. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blesses us and bless our loved ones and blesses our parents and our spouses, our children, our immediate families, our extended families. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he have mercy upon this ummah. He protects our communities. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he unite the hearts of this ummah upon the true understanding of his blessed and beloved one. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he have mercy on this ummah, forgive this ummah, conceal the faults of this ummah, rectify the state of this ummah. Those amongst them who call upon him, Allah answer their prayers. Oh Allah answer their prayers. Those who are sick, Allah give them a quick and speedy recovery and bring them back to sound health. Those who are in need, Allah fulfill their needs. Those who have passed away, Allah have mercy upon their souls and raise their stations in the next life. May we all die in a full state of Iman, a full state of faith, our last words being La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And on that, on that day when we're raised from the graves, the ultimate success is whereby he calls us forward and enables him to drink, enables us to drink from his pious and blessed and noble hand. A drink that we're never thirst from ever again. May he call us forward by our name. And may he take us by the hand on that day. And may we be under his shade on that day. And may we be led by him. And be sufficed from all tribulations on that day. The only one that can, is there for us on that day. The only one that's thinking about our sake on that day. This is what we have to remind our children. We, everyone will forget about everyone except him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On that day when we're begging and needing Allah subhanahu wa mercy, the only way is through attaching ourselves to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi intercept we, we beseech Allah for his intercession on that day. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his intercession on that day. And he take us by the hand and enter us into paradise without any reckoning or trial or test. And that's not difficult for you, Ya Allah. And we be forever in his company, all of us and all those who we know and love, gazing and basking upon your glory, Ya Allah, in the highest stations of paradise. On, the, on that day, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we be there, celebrating and rejoicing in the ultimate success, in basking on Allah's countenance and being in the company of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returns you on. That's not difficult for you, Ya Allah. And so let's have more of these gatherings. Every week, you as a family should be gathering we need to reinstill this tradition of the Mawlid. Every week you sit and contemplate over the blessings of the Prophet ﷺ. Read something from his life. We have much literature now in English. We have our Master Muhammad that's been translated. We have the Shifa that's been translated. We're trying to get as many books out now so people can appreciate the Prophet ﷺ's life. Sit down. You might not be educated. So what? Sit down with a book. Tell your children about the Prophet ﷺ. You'll learn something because you'll be inspired to put it into practice so that your children can do it as well. This is why we're producing these books. This is why at the back we're selling uh, the names of the Prophet ﷺ and how to recite them as a family together. It's available at the table there. All the proceeds go towards our institute in Kifli, our madrasa. Every penny you spend is going towards the education of children. That's a sadaqa jariya for you. Everyone that benefits and they benefit from, you benefit. So 20 pounds the book is there to bring another book to bring into your homes to recite the names of the Prophet ﷺ and go over their meanings with your children and your family. Every week we should be doing this. 
so that we can be an attach, have an attachment to him and appreciate his beauty and what he's brought to us. And so I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to instill us with a vigor to learn more about him and attach ourselves to him and bring changes into our life. I ask you that, Ya Allah, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun, wa salamun ala al alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Allah bless all those who are responsible for this gathering tonight. This, is, this was a lot of work. This looks fancy. And so the brothers and sisters that have done this tonight, Brother Zaid brought me here in this snow. We've got a white molid. Okay? They didn't get a white Christmas, we have a white molid. So, alhamdulillah, mercy from the rain is falling down. Okay, just Allah protect those driving back. Allah take them back home safely. And bless all the brothers and sisters, Talha, all the, this institute, Inner Dimensions, any aspirations they have for this institute, Allah fulfill it for them and go great and may they achieve more than they even expect. And please support them. These projects are incredibly important. We have to do community work. We have to help our communities. It's incredibly important. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.